We are now going to talk about allowances, and allowances are discussed in section 8. The first thing that you need to understand about an allowance is that an allowance is an amount that you've received in cash. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean it's not the receiving an asset, for example. If you receive an asset from your employer, then that amount is usually a fringe benefit and it's not an allowance. So, for example, there's a difference between a cell phone allowance and a cell phone that's given to you to use. The one is money that you should spend on cell phone costs and the other one is an actual cell phone. The same as there's a difference between a car allowance or a travel allowance, which is money to help you travel or to help you pay for your car expenses versus getting a company car. That's the big difference. So, allowance is a cash amount. Now, when you receive an allowance, Section 8 indicates to us that the amount is included in taxable income. Now, that seems like I'm just saying it's included in your tax, but please understand what I'm trying to tell you there is that it is not an amount that is included in gross income. It's included in your taxable income calculation. So if you look at your tax framework, the place that you should include it is down here, right before you do your taxable capital gains. So gross income, less exempt income, gives you income, less your deductions, less your assessed losses from section 20, then you add your allowances. Now it says your unexpended portions of allowances, your purpose is just worry about the term allowances for now. Now in some solutions you will see that the amount gets included in gross income, they do it over there. Um, Unfortunately, that's an inconsistency sometimes in solutions. Uh, but to make sure that you're always correct, include it over here. Okay, now, when you're looking at allowances, you need to know what amount you should include in your taxable income calculation. The first thing I want to mention to you, just as a quick little reminder is that there are some allowances that you've studied in section 10 which are exempt like for example the uniform allowance those are those exemptions still apply and specifically these type of allowances um, they're a little bit more loose whether you include it in gross income and then claim the exempt income or whether you include it and do the calculation over here um, so those aren't the ones I'm really concerned about too much we are more concerned about all the other allowances. Okay, now, for all these other allowances, you will either include the gross amount or the net amount in taxable income. Now, guys, you have to be understand what I'm trying to show you and talk about. This is quite an important concept to understand. The net amount is an amount where you have the gross in, uh, or the rather the allowance less some sort of reduction for business. The only place where you are allowed to do that is for a travel allowance and a subsistence allowance. So that's calculated as the allowance, less business expenditure gives you the net amount. That business expenditure will either be the actual business expenditure or deemed business expenditure. But you'll see we'll discuss this in a lot more detail shortly. When it comes to the gross amount, it means you include the full amount without deductions. And then you have to consider separately whether or not there will be deductions applicable. I make the comment here, watch out, this is a common mistake that students make. How do you know whether or not an amount is deductible? You have to consider section 11a and section 23m for that, especially because it's when it comes to employed people. So let me explain to you what I mean. What you will often see is they will tell you in a question, this is a very common one to see. They'll say, the person receives an entertainment allowance of 5,000 rands. And then they incur entertainment expenses. Of 4,500, let's say. So the, your employer says, listen, let's say you are a person that needs to find new customers. 
we're going to give you an entertainment allowance so you can take people out to restaurants and so on. Um, so use that money for entertainment purposes. And so they give you the allowance and then the person goes and spends money. Now, if you look at that, your gut, what does your gut tell you? Your gut tells you to do this. Your gut tells you that if this is our taxable income calculation to say that entertainment is going to be something like 5,000 minus 4,500. So 500 rands gets taxed. That's the net amount. Now, so the first thing you should see is that that is incorrect. You will always include the allowance in full in your calculation. 5,000 like that. And then when it comes to the expenses, you have to decide separately whether or not these expenses allowed as a deduction. Now let's say that this, we can assume, let's assume that this is um, in the production of income. Can you claim that as a deduction? Section 11a the general deduction formula says when carrying on a trade, expenditure and losses actually incurred during the year of assessment in the production of income, which is not capital in nature, allows the deduction. So that seems fine. But what does section 23M tell you? And this is an important one you'll remember. Section 23M says to you, if you are a person that earns mainly a salary, So more than 50%. Then you are only allowed to deduct a couple of things. Right? Can you remember those couple of things are? So it's when T for a laptop that you use. It's the retirement uh, deduction. It's legal costs and bad debts and provision for doubtful debts in respect of your salary. You would not, if you earn mainly a salary, you would not be allowed to deduct the expenses under Section 23M. However, if you earned mainly a commission, Section 23M is not applicable. And if you earn mainly a commission, then you would be allowed to claim that 4,500 as a deduction. So, if we take this, what I've just said, you would include the allowance over here, 5,000, and you would do your deduction over here under deductions, four and a half thousand if it is allowed. Now I'm warning you because most students make the mistake that think if you get an entertainment allowance, you can deduct the entertainment expenses. Now this they can change into anything. They could say it is a cell phone allowance and cell phone expenses. They could say it is a uh, a hairdressing allowance and hairdressing expenses. They can change it to what they want. You always need to test it against Section 11A and Section 23M. Now, if it's something like hairdressing, for example, remember Section 23A, for example, will also tell you that you cannot claim that as a deduction. So all of those normal rules still apply. And But that is my message to you. Don't think that an expense just gets deducted against an allowance. Those deductions for these expenses, you still have to test against the general deduction formula as well as everything in section 23, which tells you what you may not deduct. The only thing I want you to understand, or not the only thing, the most important thing I want you to understand here is that when you receive an allowance, you include the amount in full. These expenses is a whole different discussion and consideration for you. The allowance is always taxed in full. Don't think about the expense, then try and knock it off. View it as two completely separate items. They will group them together often because they like to catch students out like this and because students get caught out by that all the time. Don't be one of those students. Allowances, tax in full. Okay. Then we are going to talk quickly about reimbursements or advances. Now, a reimbursement on advance is not included in the taxable income of an employee. In other words, you don't get taxed on it. What is a reimbursement and what is an advance? So an advance is if your employer gives you money and then tells you to take that money and go and spend something 
um, and buy something for the business. So, for example, you know, I'll give you an example. X Limited gives Mr. A a thousand rands and say, listen, the office needs pens and paper. Please go and buy it at the store. So, you take their money and you go and buy their stuff. It's got nothing to do with you. Right, so you've received an amount, should you be taxed on it? That's the question. And the answer is no. A reimbursement is where you go and you spend your own money and then they give you money back for it. So, for example, Mr. A goes and buys a thousand rand stationery, he uses his own money for it, and then his boss gives him the money back and says, here you go, sorry, we're reimbursing you. Both of these amounts are treated the same, and that means they will not be included in your taxable income. But these are the requirements that must be met. First up, it must be the furtherance of the employer's trade. So your employer can't give you money and say, go and buy yourself some... Um, uh, go and buy yourself some shoes or something personal for yourself or go on holiday and have a fun time um, and we'll give you money back. No, it means they need to pay you to go and buy stock or stationery or something, an expense for the business. Then it needs to be on instruction of the employer. That's an important one. So the employer, like I said here, says go out and buy a stationery. Or it could be that the employee has to spend a part of a day away from his usual place of work. And the employer says, listen, while you're out, you can buy yourself a meal. So, for example, let's say you are working in Johannesburg and you have to fly down for the day to Cape Town to go and attend some sort of seminar. And while you're there, the employer says, listen, um, buy, yourself, buy yourself food, buy yourself lunch there. And you buy yourself lunch for 50 rands and they reimburse you or give, um, give you an advance for that 50 rands. You can then, it will be excluded. Now, this is a rule here. It says the government in the government gazette will tell you what the maximum amount will be for that. So they'll say, for example, um, the maximum amount for this, and so this will be provided to you in a test, um, is 50 rands. If your employer then gives you 200 rands, it means only 50 rands of that will not be taxed and you will have to be taxed on 150 rands okay and then the last one which is important very important is you must be able to provide proof to your employer of what you spend the money on so even here when we has to go and buy stationery they have to give him uh, mr a needs to give the employer a receipt to show how much he spent on stationery so if he go if the employer says to you here's a thousand rands Go and buy stationery, and Mr. A goes and buys stationery for 800 rands. That's 200 rands that is left. If Mr. A pays it back to his employer, then there's no tax application because then he basically received 800 rands and he spent 800 rands. If he doesn't pay it back, then he'll be taxed on it. But he has to also give that proof. This is the receipt. If he doesn't have a receipt, even if he had spent it on something properly, he'll be taxed on the full amount. Okay, so don't know think this guys. It's basic, it's it basically is if the employer tells you to go out and buy something and they give you money for it, you must buy what they told you to buy, take them a uh, proof of that, and pay them back anything that is any money or give them back the change that's left. It's very simple if you think about it, because all that you're doing is you buying something on behalf of the employer.